We're marine biologists. Of course, when we get a report of a dead animal washed up on the beach, we're gonna go check it out. All right, I got my kit of stuff to be able to do a little bit of a dissection, an investigation. Got my measuring tape so we can try to get a size on this animal. Um, but first, we gotta find it. Oh, okay. I got it. It is right here, right by this box that I'm looking here. Um, and the tide has come up quite a bit over this animal, but I still should be able to get a good sample. Most of the arms are damaged. They've probably been eaten um, by various scavengers. But check out these incredible suction cup discs. Now, if this is a freshly dead animal, which I'm assuming, because it's in still fairly good condition, uh, these suction cups can actually continue to suck uh, for a little while just due to their shape. So um, let's see. Oh, interesting. It feels kind of cool. It's very fluffy, very squishy. If I can pull one of these tentacles up so you can get you. So two rows of suction cups down each arm. so that I can hopefully get to the beak. All right, I was able to determine that this is a male octopus due to the presence of this one arm, which is just barely attached here. Um, you can see the suction cups end before the end of this arm. This is the hectocotylus. This is the male reproductive organ here. And this is for sperm packet delivery to a female. And so we know because of this, that this happens to be a male and they do die after they mate. So this is pretty typical of how we find and encounter these octopus. Um, they will mate, they'll transfer their sperm and it's a one-time thing for the male octopus. Uh, the female will then take that sperm packet and use it whenever she's ready to fertilize her eggs. Um, but after mating, the males die. And so they lose their fear of the shallow water, they lose their fear of light and begin kind of wandering around, usually until they get eaten. Um, this one's in still fairly good good quality, so we'll try to take some measurements on the size of those suction cups and see if we can preserve the beak. And of course, I already touched it <laughs> before putting my gloves on. I guess I got a little excited. All right, so I brought a measuring tape, so we'll try to get a measurement on those large, very large suction cups. Um, unfortunately, there's not a single intact arm, I don't believe. So that's going to make things a little bit difficult to get a size. That's the one. But I still have these really, really large tentacles here. So you can kind of see that these are maybe two and a half inches across. That's pretty impressive. It's really, really big. All right, let's go in and see if we can get the beak. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Oh, that's a big one. Oh my gosh. I don't even think I can lift it fully. So this is a very, very heavy animal. I've... Um, I should mention that this octopus is in really good shape. It is very freshly dead and it doesn't stink at all. Um, it is a little bit slimy, um, I'm noticing, but not, not gross at all. I'm mostly just fascinated. Um, let's go in and see if we can get the beak out. As you can see, it's very, very hard. This is the hardest part of the entire octopus's body. So that huge animal can fit through something the size of my fist, which is just remarkable. 